Good morning and welcome to this training course on the skill run. During this course, we will present the main information for a correct installation of the product, the main electronic components used in the equipment, and the principle of operation and the basic troubleshooting procedure. This course will complete your knowledge about the scale line, and this gives you the possibility to avoid to attend the class training. Remember that if you would like to attend the class anyway, you are of course welcome because this course will give you the possibility to practice and to put your hands on the machines. For all the equipment and for the skill run as well, it is very important to understand the main characteristic of the machine. The skill run is a very innovative treadmill compared to any other technology and non-technology products. You can find all this information in the e-learning platform in the part technology product release database. If you do not have this part active, please send an email to astraining at technogym.com. On this treadmill, you can do two different kind of training, active training and passive training. The active training is the standard treadmill training. It consists in the simulation of a running on a surface moved at a certain speed by an electromechanical system consisting of a motor, drive and motion transmission system. The passive training mode is a training in which the drive controls the motor so that it provides an opposition which only a resistance torque that is opposite to and resulting from the action of the user, similarly to, le to the electromagnetic brake used in the passive equipment. This kind of training is what makes necessary to use a different technology for the control of the motion. New motor, new locate, and new encoder. Even if this is an after-sales course, we consider really important to focus how to do a correct installation to avoid problem of cables being pinched when the belt is moving and the equipment moves with gradient. The rubbing of the cable with the running surface could cause the wear of the plastic. Isolation protection up to create a short circuit, a potentially dangerous condition for the user. So, we suggest five different solutions depending on the position of the power supply plug. The kind of installation depends on the positioning of the power supply. You can see at page 4 of this presentation, a couple of examples of correct installation. Here, some examples of wrong installation that must be absolutely avoided. Let's start to present the electronic components used in the skill run. The first component presented is the switch box, which manages the power at the input of the equipment. It houses the following. The equipment's power supply input socket, the on-off button, two circuit breakers on the phase and the neutral and the filter board, which reduces conduct emissions. The joystick are used to adjust the gradient and the speed. Each time they are pressed forwards or backwards, a signal is sent to the CPU board of the eye kick which changes the speed or the gradient depending on the joystick that was moved. The micro switch used in the gradient circuit is a normally closed NC switch that defines the reference gradient minus 3%. It is positioned so that it is pressed by the equipment during the reset procedure to identify the reference position. This works exactly like the microswitch used in the Excite and Artis line. 
The Gradient motor is a DC motor, a linear actuator equipped with a 24 volt DC motor, integrated reducer and steam that is moved forwards and backwards by the motor. The actuator incorporates a whole effect encoder that generates impulses associated with the motor movement. The encoder detects equipment gradient and transmits it to the driver. The Ale wind driver receives the power supply from the switch box, provide the necessary power supply to support all the electronic high kit and low kit devices in the screen. Controls the bell motor using the information coming from the encoder. Control the gradient using the information coming from the limit micro switch and from the old sensor of the gradient motor. It is connected with the braking resistance used to burn the current generated from the motor when it is used as a brake. It pilots and controls the, all the actuator and sensor able to manage the moving skill run components, communicates with the high kit, receives the information from the high kit about the training profiles, Keep the motor stopped when the equipment is not being used. It uses a deceleration ramp to pilot the motor in case of an inverter overload of the actuation condition. Pilots the motor. In this way, it receives the instant speed and delivers torque at every moment, based on which it calculates the power developed by the user at every moment and passive training mode modulates the motor torque to create a load against which the user must resist and manage the energy surplus coming from the motor. The ALE wind applies a speed limitation to keep the running surface from breaking away when the torque delivered by the engine prevails over the one applied by the thrust of the user. It signals also the absence of the user to the eye kit. As a result, the eye kit commands a stop. The Halloween drive is available in two variants Halloween 60M for the European version, Halloween 20M version for the rest of the world. The drive houses a 24F4 fuse that provides the 24 volt line. The 24 volt line power the fan and the gradient motor. In this slide, you can see the LEDs present inside the low kit and their meaning. Stop the video and read this table. Other components are here presented. The first one is the brake unit, that in some equipment is positioned inside the low kit. In the skill run, it is outside. If you have some doubt about its position and how to replace it, please check the e-learning of disassembly of part of the skill run. It can dissipate up to 750 watt. It is possible to reach this value when the run is used in passive mode. The bell motor brushless surface magic motor. It is equipped with an encoder that detects the revolution per minute of the motor, which is like to measure the bell speed, and transmits it to the Ale wind drive. Three different types of motor were used until now, when this training was recorded. Long I motor is the first model used. The second model is always produced by I motor motor. We Identify it as short I motor. The motor length is reduced of 3 cm in comparison to the I motor motor first motor. The introduction of all these different kinds of motor led to replacing the bracket that fastens the motor to the frame in the rear with a new one that is compatible with all the three motor models. 
For details regarding the procedure to follow when replacing the motor, we suggest to see the paragraph of the Technical Service Guide 6.1.3. This motor can be checked exactly in the same way of the Excite motor. Let me specify that the resistance between the three phases has a different value. Let me remind you also that uh, like any other motor installed in the treadmill of the Excite and Artist line, it is not grounded. So you must not touch it when it is powered, otherwise you may ground it and use your body as an electrical wire. This is another reason to use always the electric gloves when you are doing troubleshooting tests in your treadmills. Assembled on the motor, there is another component that we need to present, the belt motor encoder. In its simplest form, two parts can be distinguished. The body, which is the fixed part that houses the electric electronic component, sensor, circuit and so on. And the rotor, which is the rotating part that ends with a shaft to be connected to the axis that should be read. The electric output signals transmit the information relative to the position or movement of the rotor with respect to the body. In the relative encoders, the electric output signal are proportional to the movement of the rotor with respect to the body. Simple circuit can read and view the speed and acceleration of the related axis, but not its instantaneous position. The encoder is not an absolute type, which means that it does not indicate the exact position, but only the speed. The encoder permits the drive to control the movement of the belt and to understand in the passive training, which is the speed reached by the user. On the scale run, we assemble two different kinds of displays, the X10 inches display and Unity display. Both the displays include a Bluetooth module, which is a dual mode combined, classic and low energy. It manages the following components, Bluetooth heart belt, Bluetooth wireless headphones, and connection with Apple iPhone or iPod and Android devices. The streaming of the music is possible only if Unity Display is installed. The Bluetooth module make it possible to navigate the contents of the smartphone only if Unity Display is installed. The My Wellness app is required in case of Android. The Bluetooth module makes it possible to log in the machine. Included in the display, there are also the TV tuner, the NFC board and the USB port. The TV tuner is integrated in the CPU board. In the Japanese version, there is instead an external tuner connected with a flat cable to the CPU. In particular, for the audio-video output, the tuner has an HDMI out that connects with the cable to the HDMI in one of the CPU board. The flat cable provides the commands to the tuner. The NFC my fair board is used to interface with my wellness band and tag my fair nfc the nfc my fair board includes an accelerometer that is used as end user detection the bluetooth and m plus receiver that allows to extend the bluetooth functionality also to cardio belt m plus for the skill run unity 5000 and the skill run Unity 7000, the USB port is used for after sale services. For upgrades, high kit, low kit, tuner board only in the Japanese version, for recovery procedure, for transferring radio and TV channels, and network configuration between interfaces only for Unity, for transferring user contents, audio, video, photo, documents. For the Skill Run TX500, the USB port is used only for maintenance operation, software update and recovery procedure. Let's now start to present the principle of operation of the Skill Run. 
If you want to understand how the scale run works, you need to understand five operating principles. Power distribution, emergency management, stop management, management of the belt motor, and inclined motor management. If you remember the presentation of the run of the excite line, the principle of operation, wherefore, the missing one is the stop management, because in the excite line, the stop signal is sent from the CPU to the low kit using the digital line. For this, for this reason, it is not possible that it is faulty. In the scale run, you'll see that the stop signal is an analog signal, so we must understand how it is managed and how the machine reacts if it is faulty. It is mandatory to understand these five principle of operation to be able to associate each error with the correct circuit and after this first important step analyze the presence or absence of the signal involved to identify the defective component. Depending on the model ordered and you can find this information checking the fifth character of the equipment model or serial number the low kit can work with a power supply of around 120 volt AC or if it is a standard range with a power supply of 100 to 220 volt AC. Once the power is reaching the low kit is correct, the two different models are working in the same way. It is generating 5 volt DC to power up the gradient motor or sensor the motor encoder and other internal components, two lines of 12 volt DC to power up the display and used to manage the alarm signal, 24 volt DC to power up the gradient motor and its internal fan. Now let's open the cover of the Halloween and see what are the components inside that can be replaced. Attention, as you can see from this image, in the center of the board there are four very big capacitors. It is necessary to wait until the capacitors are completely discharged before opening the lid of the low kit. 15-20 minutes after switching off the machine should be enough. However, there is a blue LED on the board that must completely be switched off before opening the cover. To have the possibility to see all the LEDs, the low kit must be slid out a few centimeters from its location. The first component we present is the cooling fan. The fan is oriented to extract air from inside. In case of replacement, it is important to install the replacement correctly. The fan is equipped with an encoder whose signal is used by the low kit to know the operating status of the fan. In the event that the fan encoder signal no longer reaches the input of the low kit, this goes into error and blocks the run. Other components that can be replaced individually are the fuses. Let's move on the next slide to understand how they are powered. Of course, the VAC voltage enters in the low kit from its connector, then passes through two ceramic fuses at the top right in this image. If one of the two is damaged, nothing works. All the LED are off. After which, it is divided into two lines, one that passes through the four capacitor and the DC link, and the other transits from another fuse before passing through a transformer that generates two lines of 12 volt, one of 24 and one of 5 volts DC. If the ceramic fuse is damaged, all the LED will be off, but the blue one. Let's present the gradient motor management. It is managed exactly like in the excite line. Few words to summarize it. The CPU board or iKit communicates the set training profiles to the driver via the RS485 serial communication cable. 
Based on the received commands, the drive sends plus or minus 24 volt DC power supply to the grounded motor. When the motor receives the voltage, it starts to move. In order to control the position of the gradient, the driver receives a signal from the old sensor used to know exactly the actual inclination. The drive needs another input. To reach the horizontal position, a basic information is provided from the limit microswitch. The position of reference is acquired by the equipment during the reset procedure carried out each time that the equipment is turn on and each time that the microswitch is pressed. The limit microswitch is normally closed and open when pressed. When turned on and each time the emergency button is pressed and reset, the equipment carries out the reset procedure in order to determine the reference of the gradient. The equipment performs a downward movement until the limit microswitch is actuated. Then it moves up, arriving at a slope equal to zero degree. All the movements of obtaining a different gradient are variation with regard to this reference. The following signals are involved with the control. RS485 signal. It is a digital signal exchanged by the drive and the CPU board. Motor voltage. This is the continuous voltage generated by the drive to supply the gradient motor. In absolute values, it is equal to 24 volt DC. And depending on its sign, the motor rotates clockwise or counterclockwise. As a result, the gradient of the equipment increases or decreases. Pulse signal. This is a square signal wave signal from 0 to 5 volt DC and 50% duty cycle produced by all sensor when the gradient motor moves. It is sent to the drive to provide feedback about the movement. This signal varies between a value of 0 volt and high value of 5 volt DC. Measured with the multimeter, this signal can be either 0 or 5 when the motor is stopped. Whereas during movement, it is more or less 2.5 volt DC. To function correctly, the whole sensor must be supplied with a voltage of 5 volt DC, which is supplied by the drive. Limit microswitch signal. The limit microswitch is a normally closed contact that enters the drive. The contact is open when the equipment presses it during the reset procedure. Let's see how to check the signal in case of gradient problem. To check if the 24 volt DC reaches the gradient motor, insert the tips of the tester in pin 1 and 2 of the gradient motor connector connected to the drive, or connect it to the extension cable with the resistance 0WCU 1086 if present. Switch the machine off and on and wait the reset. To check that 5V DC reaches the old sensor, insert the tips of the tester in pin 4 and 5 of the gradient motor connector connected to the drive. How to check if the old sensor pulses are sent to the drive? Turn off the equipment Insert the tips of the tester in pin 4 and in pin 6 of the gradient motor connector connected to the drive. Turn on the equipment and wait for the reset. During the reset, check that the measured value is around 2.5 volt DC. If the value 2.5 volt DC is measured, the old sensor functions correctly. Skill run as Three different ways to stop the exercise. The first one is to press the stop button on the display. The CPU board interrupts the exercise by sending the information to the low key by the digital line. This button causes a controlled and gradual stop of the equipment. The second one is the central stop button. This is also a regular stop. 
but the signal goes to the I kit and after that the CPU changes the value of an analog signal sent to the low kit. This pattern causes a control and gradual stop of the equipment as well. The last one is the emergency stop. The output signal of this device goes to the display and to the low kit. When the emergency is activated, the motor is stopped immediately. It keeps rotating for few seconds due to its inertia. Let's see in details how the stop signal is managed. The device comprises a red stop button, which houses two normally closed series connected microswitches. Once the button is pressed by the user, the two microswitch switch to open state. The display reads the command directly and changes the stop signal sent to the lower key from 6 volt DC to 0 volt DC. When the low kit receives 0 volts, DC stops the running belt in a controlled manner. If at the startup the low kit receives 0 volts at its input in the stop signal lines, the reset cannot be complete and the equipment cannot start the exercise. In this case, it is necessary to check in sequence the micro switches and the stop signal. The emergency stop consists of a device that incorporates a normally closed contact, which switches to the open state when the user pulls the cord. The generated signal is sent directly to the drive and to the display too. CPU manages the appropriate message at the display. The low kit cuts immediately the signal to the drive motor. To restore all the functions of the equipment after an emergency stop, reposition the switch in its seat. How is the drive release procedure? The drive receives the restore signal from the CPU board. Afterwards, the drive performs the reset procedure. The CPU board communicates the set training profiles to the drive via the RS485 serial communication cable. The drive puts the motor in motion by sending a variable frequency sinusoidal voltage. As the frequency varies, also the speed of the motor and therefore the speed of the treadmill belts varies. During movement, the drive constantly controls the motor, monitoring the absorbed current. If problems are detected under voltage, overcurrent, inverter software, and so on, it interrupts the movement of the motor and generates an alarm signal towards the CPU board. Furthermore, to protect the motor from over-temperature problems, a thermal breaker has been inserted in the motor that checks the temperature. The temperature cannot exceed the threshold of the component's range. If this threshold is exceeded, the normally closed contact opens, generating an inverter error. The inverter stops the motor. This condition is detected by the drive as the opening of the external normally closed type contact. In that case, the drive interrupts the motor movement and sends an alarm signal to the CPU board. To summarize, the following signals are involved with the control. The digital signal. It is a digital signal exchanged by the drive and the CPU board. The variable frequency VAC signal. This is the alternating variable frequency voltage generated by the drive to power the motor. As the frequency increases, the motor speed increases. The encoder signal, which is the encoder frequency. The thermal probe signal. The motor is equipped with a thermal probe that has normally closed contact. When the temperature threshold is exceeded, the contact opens and causes the motor stop. In the slide 24 and in the slide 25, we show how to check the encoder, the motor and the low kit.
Thank you very much for your attention.